Hello traders at CMC Markets. Welcome to a fresh update by RRG Research for Monday the 19th of June. And I'm recording this on Friday the 16th. My name is Julius de Campenaar and I am presenting to you from Amsterdam in the Netherlands. Let's start with a quick look at the rotation for the various uh, world stock market indexes. And the RRG that we're looking at here is a weekly RRG. And I want to point out that the longer term trends that we've been tracking are still in play. And I think that the, most, the two most important spreads, two most important uh, opposite rotations that we're looking for are for the Japanese Nikkei index, which is arguably the strongest stock market from a relative perspective at the moment, against the Hang Seng. It's the same same area, same set of, and we, we talked about that previously. <clears throat> and you can see that that move in, in favor of the Japanese Nikkei is still well underway, with the Nikkei pushing further into the leading quadrant and the Hang Seng pushing further into the lagging quadrant. The other big rotation that we can still see is for the US, um, uh, mainly the S&P and the NASDAQ pushing into the leading quadrant. So that's a positive take. Um, versus Euro Europe, so the, the stocks index, the FTSE, uh, the CAC and the DAX are all moving left either inside the lagging quadrant or uh, rapidly moving towards it. So uh, summarizing this from a longer term perspective, Japan still favored over Hong Kong and the US still favored over Europe. <clears throat> now let's look at a, um, at a more granular daily chart and you can see that some things are shifting. Um, the Hang Seng here is uh, well inside the improving quadrant, so it's picking up a lot of relative momentum. Uh, on the other hand, you saw that the Nikkei was moving counter trend, but it last two, three days, it started to move back up. That makes the Nikkei still the stronger market. Uh, we'll look at the chart in a minute, but the Hang Seng is picking up rapidly. The question is whether this is a temporary setback hiccup um, and the Nikkei will continue to, uh, to be favored over Hong Kong, or whether a, um, a shift in sentiment between those two indexes is going on. For the time being, with the strength of the Nikkei on the weekly RRG and the return back to strength on the daily, uh, I'm still going with a longer term preference for Japan over Hong Kong with potentially a near term um, setback. So, <clears throat> You know, it, it, it was a very tradable and nice move. Maybe in the near term, it's time to, to lock in some of those gains. Um, but it's not going the other side. Let me put it like that. So it's not that all of a sudden now Hong Kong is massively favored over the Nikkei. It's like when you trade, when, you, when you're trading and you, you, you're in an uptrend and you're in a longer term uptrend, you want to try to capture the, the up moves. And if you, if you trade counter trend, that is dangerous because you're trading against the, um, the major longer term trend. And the major longer term trend here is in favor of Japan over Hong Kong. So uh, what I'm looking at is to see if we can capture those periodic rallies of the Nikkei over Hong Kong from a relative perspective. Quite similar for, uh, for the US, you can see that the S&P and the NASDAQ are rolling over. However, they're still on the right hand side of the chart. Uh, they're inside weakening. But all that European stuff uh, is on the left hand side and moving further left. So it's got quite a similar story there where there is still a longer term preference for the US over Europe. But it seems to be going through a little bit of a setback. And here also the uh, longer term trend that weekly uh, RRG is prevailing and um, the, the shorter term tails on this daily chart are for now, I would say indicative of a, of a short term pause in that move. Let's quickly look at the same RRG, but now we're using a 0% return, which essentially makes this RRG a, a, a price trend <coughs> analysis tool. And what you see here is a uh, strength across the board for all these stock market indices. When you're on the right hand side, you're on an uptrend and when you're moving up from so from from below 100 on the momentum scale to above 100. It basically means that you're 
picking up momentum, picking up a trend. And these, the green ones here, they're doing that well. They're already in an uptrend. The blue and the red ones are doing that well. They're coming out of uh, a downtrend. Let me quickly go over a few of those individual charts. So here's the Nikkei index. And you can see why there might be a short setback uh, on the horizon. This is an almost vertical rise undoubtedly you know undeniably super strong nice higher highs and higher lows we've got some uh, previous highs coming in as support in case of a, of a decline but what i what i see here is that there is negative uh, divergence building up between price and the rrg and that's usually at least for the near term signaling a pause or a small counter trend move if we look at the RRG lines and you can see that that RS ratio line has reached a relatively high level and momentum has just dipped it's absolutely possible for the Nikkei to for that for that momentum line to get back above 100 while the RS ratio remains above 100 and then you'll get one of those rotations on the right hand side where you go from leading into weakening and back into leading which basically underscores a super strong relative trend for the Nikkei index when we look at Hong Kong, we can see why that was a negative, and especially when we talked about it last, it, just, it was just breaking below that support area here. That move has been reversed, and we're now breaking this falling trend line. Uh, that is definitely a lot less reliable than any horizontal level that you can see, but nevertheless, it looks as if something is shifting under the hood, and you can see how those relative strength lines are, um, are, are starting to move a little bit higher. They are, however, indicating that the relative strength for Hong Kong versus the MSCI world is still a lot lower than for the Nikkei index. So for the time being, as I said, longer term preference for Nikkei over Hong Kong. It looks as if we're going into a shorter term pause of that move. That's, that's basically the final con conclusion, I'd say. When we quickly go to the NASDAQ, you can see how that has rallied and is very steeply moving higher. And we're now starting to push against overhead resistance coming from those two highs back in March 2022. Given the uh, massive rally and the steepness of the rally, I wouldn't be surprised if we could see some sort of a setback going on there. You can see how the relative is already starting to lose a bit of momentum. Um, RSI still pushing higher, so that is still underscoring the uh, longer term strand of that market. But I'd be very careful with new long positions, especially as we're pushing against that overhead resistance area. The S&P is a little different in the way, in the sense that it has just broken uh, a major overhead resistance level around 4300, 4350. And we're now on the way to that range, which I think is around 4550. You can see how this level here, that's 4535, was played a role a few times in the past. And you can see how that 4580, let's say 4600, played a role in the past. So that creates a bit of a zone here, which is, you know, the middle is 4550. That is definitely a very well possible target for the S&P 500. The relative strength index, the RSI, is at almost peak levels. Uh, and we've seen that here before. That doesn't mean that you can't go higher, as you can see. As a matter of fact, high RSI values are good because it means that over the last, and in my case, that's nine days, market has predominantly been going higher. Um, so overbought, Yes, but overbought conditions can continue for quite a while. Uh, it's only starting to be a problem when the overbought condition is going to be reversed. That's usually when you start paying attention to indicators like the RSI. <clears throat> so here is the uh, stocks index. You can see how that is having trouble moving higher. Here the RSI is moving a little lower. I'm not calling this a divergence because we have seen levels well below 30. And for me, a divergence is something like this here. This is a divergence where um, the RSI never dipped below 50. That's when I start getting interested in um, re taking a negative divergence, like here, when you see this like here. Here you see a very clear divergence. There's no, this, this low here didn't dip below 50. That happened here. That's kind of negating what you see here. I hope that makes sense. 
And then finally, the DAX index, the um, one of the major European markets, it is pushing against its all-time high, and that makes it a bit of a, a an important juncture, I think, because obviously when the DAX takes out that all-time high, 10, 10, 16, 290, so let's say 16, 300, that opens up massive upside potential. Um, RSI is not triggering any signals at the moment, but look at the relative strength. That is, that is a very weak relative strength reading for the DAX index against the rest of the world. So despite the fact that the DAX is pushing against um, overhead resistance coming from all-time high levels, it is still not as strong as, for example, the Nikkei index or the S&P and the NASDAQ. Keep that in the back of your mind when you make your decisions on what index to trade and from what direction. Let's move to the FANG stocks, to the New York FANG index. And this is very much like the NASDAQ index. It, is, uh, it came out of a massive bottoming formation. <clears throat> and the interesting thing is you could, we could argue that this is a massive head and shoulders reversal pattern. And this was the neckline. If we want to go that route, then it means that we had like 41.50 as the low point in the formation. And we have around 6,000 as the um, as the neckline <clears throat> when we pre project that distance from the breakout level it's round about 8000 where we're getting there so there is massive resistance and it's it's the price target for that inverted head and shoulders pattern if you into that type of analysis nevertheless <clears throat> there's two ways of analyzing this and they both come out at a pretty heavy resistance area around 8000 and look at the RSI here. This is a this is a this is seriously negative divergence. It, you know, since the rally here. So this is May 17th. This high here, the RSI has not been able to confirm those highs. That is a pretty strong negative divergence. <clears throat> Price chart here, clearly still very strong, but the risk is increasing because we're running into resistance and our support is only at 7,000. With this type of divergence, I wouldn't be surprised if we can see some sort of a topish action and the uh, New York FANG index moving lower, maybe even going all the way back to 7,000 and test it before continuing uh, its bullish trend, which is still there from a longer term perspective. But it looks as if we're getting into some short term trouble here, uh, to be honest. If we look at the uh, the daily RRG for the FANG, and this is obviously using the, the New York FANG as the benchmark. <laughs> and you can see how uh, two major components here, so NVIDIA and AMD, are rolling over and losing relative strength. Tesla's still okay. Netflix, stable. Look at the, the difference in the tail length. Netflix is on the right-hand side with a short tail. And you see NVIDIA and AMD moving um, in the south eastern uh, sort southwestern direction 180 to 270 degrees at, a, at, at quite strong move so netflix is still doing okay in this regard so is tesla but nvidia and amd uh, they, they at least they're going through some sort of a setback interesting tale here for snowflake uh, moving out of the lagging quadrant powering into the improving quadrant at probably the longest tail uh, of this entire universe. Let's look at a few of these individual charts. So here is NVIDIA. <clears throat> we all know trading a new all-time high is massive rally. Look at this gap here that is massive. But, and you see that red strength is rolling over, but more importantly, look at this, uh, this RSI here. This is a divergence. This is a strong divergence. Where, where can it go? I mean, again, longer term trend is still there, but Personally, I wouldn't be a big fan of buying it at these levels. You're, you're buying at all-time highs. It's usually not the best idea. And where can it go back if we get a setback? I'm looking for the gap area, which is between, let's say, 365 and uh, 315. Big area, obviously. And a bigger dotted red line here is coming off the previous high. So there is a lot of, a lot of support to be found <clears throat> between 320 and 360. And even if that happens, it's not going to harm the longer term uptrend for NVIDIA. So very, very likely in the next couple of weeks, we may see better entry opportunities for NVIDIA. And that probably also goes for AMD because it's showing kind of the same type of pattern. Look at the divergence here between the price and the RSI. That's pretty strong. And look at the RRG lines. They're rolling over. So it's losing relative strength. It's now time 
inside the New York FANG index for other stocks to actually um, take over uh, to actually push that index higher if it's possible at all. I'm quickly going over a few of the other uh, FANG stocks. So here is Meta um, pushing higher, nearing gap resistance. Look at the relative strength that's losing, losing momentum, losing strength here. RSI not able to confirm the recent rally. Look at Amazon. Um, RSI not able to, uh, to, to confirm those levels. Relative strength rolling over. Look at Google. Uh, this could arguably be a very small head and shoulders pattern, but here is a higher high. Relative strength is negative. Look at the RSI. You got strong negative divergence here. So when Google takes out 120 to the downside, I'd be very careful with Google. Could be a nice trading, tradable opportunity because the next support area is 109 and there's a little gap here around 114. <clears throat> Look at Netflix running into resistance and Snowflake. That's the one that I want to talk to you about. Snowflake um, is not overbought. It's the RSI is just like just coming into that overbought area, at least moving over 70. But I, what I really like is the move in the price chart where it's just taken out its overhead resistance around 185. Still a little bit left, of course, 205. It's a tradable opportunity in my opinion. And then the next one is around 245. So out of all these FANG stocks, it looks as if Snow, Snowflake is starting to take over from what we just said, NVIDIA and AMD and maybe a few of the others. We're running out of time here. Let's quickly go to, um, to the Forex stuff. <clears throat> this one, this is the weekly. It's kind of, still kind of spread out. Um, but the more important thing is when you look at the daily RRG for the US dollar. What this means, this is all these pairs are moving on the top right. And mind you, they're all expressed in US dollars. And that means um, US dollar weakness, actually. You see that all these currencies are moving higher against the dollar. So that is, um, in a general sense, in this time frame, dollar weakness at the, at the moment for the time being. And that's all happening after the, fat, the release of the Fed figures last Wednesday. Wednesday. And you can see how that um, euro dollar chart put in a new low. We started moving higher. And then this week we got the, uh, the acceleration. So it actually started... So this is uh, Thursday, so Wednesday. This is where it started here, Wednesday the 14th, when it moved higher and we got a good follow through um, uh, yesterday on Thursday. Uh, so we'll have to see how that goes. But the, the, from this point of view, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we would see 110, 111 again. And with this move, there's now a very solid new low in place, um, which you can draw a trend line underneath. It's, I, I shaded it a little bit because I pay way more attention to the horizontal levels uh, that I've drawn in here. But if we take this trend line as a starting point, these highs are lining up uh, in parallel. So it looks as if we're starting to build a little channel, uh, <coughs> uh, which means that, that for Euro dollar, there is definitely upside potential to be gained. Uh, towards 111, uh, maybe even a little higher. And that's important because that could mean um, a, a real reversal of that longer term downtrend that we saw here. It was still possible, we're still possible that we put in a new high here, but I'm, I'm getting more and more skeptic about that because we are getting back above, uh, and I need to make that really long for you to see that, but here you can see how around 104 was a very important level. We broke that, we got back above it, um, and we, we really would need to go back below 104 uh, to actually get back into that dollar strength move. And that, that seems to be further away right now. So for the time being, uh, strength for the Euro, but also for pretty much all the other currencies uh, and in general dollar weakness. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you again next week and a new update by RRG Research. Same time, same place.